On today's episode, we are gonna be doing some summer and outdoor themed thrift flips. I'm also gonna be showing you a few thrifted outfits from ThreadUp, who is sponsoring this episode. After 15 years of marriage, my husband and I are finally getting our first real legit romantic tropical getaway. I'm so excited. I kind of went on a little shopping spree and I want to share some of those fun outfits with you. But first, let's get headed to the thrift store and see what we can find for our thrift flips. We are back from our thrifting adventures and I am already, as you can tell, so excited to do these outdoor kind of summery thrift flips for you because I'm ready. I really love the warm weather, I love the sunshine, and I just am ready to rock and roll on these thrift flips. And our first thrift flip is a picnic basket. Now I've got two picnic baskets. We're gonna start with this one. And so with our first one, I found this basket at a thrift store. I believe it was for $6.99. It kind of has like a suitcase feel, but it's definitely a picnic basket. And I knew we could update it and give it new life. And the first thing that I did might seem scary to some of you, but I just decided I really wanted it to be white. So I went ahead and spray painted it very well. We did it the inside. We flipped it over and did the outside and we kind of just got it from every angle making sure to let it thoroughly dry. The, the nice thing about this is you kind of can spray it on a little bit thicker than normal because there's a lot of nooks and crannies and it kind of just sucked it right up. You don't want to go too crazy. Dolly wants to say hi. Say hi. This is the DIY dolly. Hello, sweetheart. She's gonna help us narrate today. I wanted to do something more than just spray paint it white. I wanted to give it a little character and all of our thrift flips kind of have a little bit of a French flair, if you will. But if that's not your style, I hope you still watch because there's a lot of good techniques and ideas that you can kind of implement your own look into. Stick with me, even if French isn't your thing. But I knew I wanted to have kind of like a picture of something yummy that had a French flair. So I designed this image for you and I will be giving you the free printable in the description box below. So look for the link for that. This image is gonna go on this oval wood round that I got from the Dollar Tree back when it was still a dollar and <laughs> not a dollar 25. It's not painful at all. I, I don't keep talking about the fact that they went up. <laughs> Just kidding. But we needed to prep the surface for what we are gonna be doing because there's a little bit of a twist to this printable. So the first thing I did was fill in those little holes with putty and then I let that dry. And then of course, after that was dry, I sanded it down, prepping it for paint. We are gonna paint that out in two coats of white chalk paint and, and prep the surface for it. Then we are gonna print out our image onto what's called water slide paper. I've used water slide paper in the past and I just absolutely love this technique. I love it over a couple of other techniques. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute because I, I do try one of these different techniques in it. It didn't go so well, so you'll see. Now that we've got our image printed out on this special water slide paper, this is the most important step for this whole process. You're gonna spray three coats of this triple thick crystal clear glaze by Krylon. This is the one that I recommend. You just need some kind of like acrylic based clear glaze. It dries pretty fast, especially in nice weather. And so every 15 minutes you can put on a coat and then when it's dry, we're gonna cut out that oval shape and then we're gonna submerge it in water. And this is where the whole water slide feature comes into play. Once we've submerged it underwater for about 30 seconds, it might, you know, give or take, when you can start to feel it lift off of the backing, we are gonna set it right on top of our painted oval and we're gonna line it up how we want it and then we're gonna slowly pull out the backing from underneath. Now, the water kind of activates like a wallpaper kind of glue paste and so that's gonna help it stick and then you kind of just press out all of the air bubbles and then you let it fully dry. 
Now, you could, because it already has the polyacrylic on it, you don't need to seal it again, but I always do because I kind of wanted it to have more of a matted finish and the triple thick glaze is definitely a high gloss look. And so once that is fully dry, I did one coat this time around of that matte sealer and we sprayed that on. Now while that's drying, we are going to add a little bit more detail to our basket. We kind of spray painted over the brass little buttons and everything. So I just went back in with some gold leaf rub and buff and just kind of added those little gold accents back onto our basket just to give it a little bit more personality and bring some of that character back. And then with our oval shape dry, I, I centered it on our the front of our basket and used some E6000 to adhere our little sign to our cute picnic basket. And that's it. And it is a super cute picnic basket that you could take. I, I really love really love how this turned out. I really love that extra added element of the oval round with like the really cute French pastry on it. Again, I'll link that free printable for you in the description box below. And I hope you recreate this look and if you do, send it to me over on Instagram. Okay, so for my next summer themed outdoor thrift flip, it, it's another picnic basket. And I'm just gonna be upfront with you. Unfortunately, it did not turn out quite as I had envisioned it in my head. And it's okay because I learned from it and we'll just discuss it as we go along. The first thing I did was putty and then I let that dry. And then of course, after that was dry, I sanded it down prepping it for paint. I also envisioned this painted out white. So that's what I did is I, I, spray painted the entire exterior interior with a spray paint and it wasn't really soaking it up very good this is definitely much more porous so it was really sucking in the paint so once that was dried i went back over the whole thing with a white chalk paint that really gave it a lot better coverage and because i actually initially primed it essentially it did go really quickly and easily so i would recommend still spraying it because it did make the coat of chalk paint go on much better and then i also wanted to do an image on the top of this solid wood basket because it's a little bit different shape and i kind of went back and forth between two images that i found on an etsy store which i will link below it's not my etsy shop it's somebody else's and i decided to just print them both out on a poster size paper which i don't honestly i don't know if i would repeat this process so i'm going to tell you what i did and then i'll tell you why i don't know that i would repeat this process but I, I had it printed at Staples because it's really important to when you're doing an image transfer technique to have it printed on a laser printer and I feel like they do a really high quality print job as you can see in the in the b-roll. I ultimately decided to go to like the farm fresh market one on the top of the picnic basket. So I've done a lot of image transfers in the past and some of them have gone great and some of them have not gone super great. And I had some suggestions from people and I'd seen other ways to do the image transfer. So I decided to try a polyacrylic. Now I've done Liquitex matte gel medium pretty much every time I've done an image transfer. And honestly, I, I think it's kind of sixes after having done both of them. They both work great or as good <laughs> as the other one. Um, so what I did is I did a coat of polyacrylic and it's the non-yellowing kind. And I did a good coat of that. And then I took our Farm Fresh Market and set it right down on top and smoothed out all of the bubbles. Now the cool thing about using like the polyacrylic versus the Liquitex is the amount of time you have to wait. The Liquitex, you really should wait overnight, like about 12 hours. You can get away with doing less time, but really you should let it have that full time. With the polyacrylic, you can let it dry for two hours and get away with it. I actually, uh, just because of timing and everything, let this dry overnight and there was really no difference. The next step in a image transfer technique is saturating the back with water. Now, I've learned from experience that less is more. You can always add more water and it's actually better to do it in kind of stages. Now, the paper that I had this printed out on was like the, 
the least weight as I possibly could was still really thick. So I started peeling up layers of this and I don't know if it was the texture of the box or what, I just, it did not adhere the image very well at all. The saturation level on was not on there super good and it looked um, pretty rustic. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, you to do it little by little, just use a clean cloth and water and just very carefully peel away the image transfer paper. Now, after doing this project and, and seeing that there are better ways to get an image on there, I think I'm kind of through doing the image transfer. I never say never, but I, I just have done it enough and had such hit and miss results. I don't think that I will be doing this again. So, I mean, I did add a little bit of black rub and buff on the little buttons on the outside. I kind of sanded down the edges to kind of give it an overall look. Off camera, I kind of went back in with a little bit of rub and buff and kind of filled in the lettering a little bit. Overall, I'm not thrilled with the final result. I, I think it's cute, it's kind of rustic, and maybe for the right person, it would be like a really awesome look um, I instead of redoing the interior in the old basket there was like some old kind of like 1970s like vinyl liner I decided not to redo that and instead I had this beautiful kind of green and white checked tablecloth that I got on spring clearance last year at Hobby Lobby that's just been sitting there waiting and I thought this would be really cute to throw this tablecloth in and have a picnic on it I may redo this basket. I don't know. It's it's cutish. It's cutish. I don't hate it, but I have a better way, and that's going to be coming up in my next thrift flip. I'm going to tell you all about it in just a second. So as I mentioned, my husband and I are getting ready to go on a romantic getaway here next week. When we were first married, we were super poor college students, and we never really took a true honeymoon. So then we got busy having kids and busy with work, and now. Now is the time. I am so excited for this trip. We're headed to the Dominican Republic. And in preparation for that, I went shopping at ThreadUp. Now they are sponsoring this episode. I love ThreadUp because I can get beautiful clothes for a fraction of the cost and it's good for our environment. A lot of people get rid of their clothes because they either don't fit for them or don't work. Um, and there's a lot of life in them. And a lot of times you can even find new things on ThreadUp. So I cannot wait to show you the outfits that I got. So for my first outfit, I really wanted a white dress. I felt like a white dress that was beachy and tropical. And so I went looking and there were a ton of white dresses on ThreadUp. But I found this one and it's kind of shorter in front and it's very flowy, it's soft and it's, I know it's gonna be cool and it's longer in back. And I don't know why, but it kind of made me feel like a blushing bride. My husband makes me feel like a blushing bride even 15 years later. But <laughs> anyways, I really love this dress. So the estimated retail for this beautiful dress was $48. I got it on ThreadUp for $20.99. It was in like new condition. I love it. I feel like it's very flattering. I paired it with this pink peony that I pulled out of one of my arrangements and hot glued a pin to. I just thought it kind of made it a little fun. And then I of course did turquoise earrings to go with my turquoise shoes. So these little turquoise sandal wedges I thought were super cute. And they kind of reminded me of my Hirachi sandals that I wore when I was younger, but a little bit more grown up and pretty and they are turquoise. The estimated retail for these shoes are about $74 and I got them on ThreadUp for just $31.99. I love the overall look of this outfit. I'm really excited to wear it for my husband on our romantic getaway. I've got a few more outfits for you so let's go switch it out. It was your crooked little smile that caught my eye. Okay so my next outfit might be my favorite just because I feel like every good tropical romantic vacation needs a good hat and I think this one is super cute. It's from Express. The estimated retail for the hat is around $35. I got it on ThreadUp for just $15.99. I don't know. What do you think of the hat? <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the wrap. I think this is going to be perfect for on the plane ride, but also like on a chilly evening if they have those. It's from Talbot's. Estimated retail was for $48. I got it on ThreadUp for just 
$15.99. I paired it with this Zara top that retails for about $20 and it still had the tags on it. I got it for $8.99 and then I have these adorable cropped pants that are kind of like linen and they're tie at the waist super lightweight super comfy i know it's black but it's really breathable the estimated retail for these are about 60 dollars and i got them from thread up for 31.99 they are super super comfortable now let's talk about my shoes <laughs> i wear this brand all the time. They're by Vionic. They're super cute with this fun cheetah print. Yes, you can pair cheetah print with a stripe. It really does work. Why I like them is they have really good arch support and I have high arches. They retail for $149.99 or approximately thereabout. And I got them for just $42.99 on ThreadUp. They didn't look like they had been worn at all. Super cute. I love this outfit. It might be my favorite one. Like I said, it's super cute okay i'm gonna share just one more outfit with you so hang with me it's cute so I have another dress for you and it's a little bit similar in style to the first dress but it's got a fun kind of tropical print it's got a fun little slit right here not not inappropriate but kind of cute I love this I feel pretty I feel feminine it's a really lightweight fabric and it's just flowy <laughs> and I think it's really cute it's an Aka dress is the brand and it originally estimated retail is about $48 and I got it on thread up for $25.99 it's in fantastic condition it's beautiful but let's talk about the shoes here these shoes are super pretty. They are by Donald J. Pliner and the estimated retail for these shoes are $297. I paid just $42.99 on ThreadUp. That's an 84% savings off the estimated retail and they're really pretty. They're like a rose gold color. I think they look really pretty with this dress. I love ThreadUp. I love working with ThreadUp because I am such a huge fan of their company and what they stand for. It's awesome. If you haven't tried ThreadUp, I highly recommend them. And they are offering first time ThreadUp buyers a 30% off coupon code, which I will list in the description box below, plus free shipping. So if you haven't tried them out yet, you're definitely gonna wanna try them out. But let's get back to our thrift flips. I know that that's what you're here for. So let's get to our next thrift flip. My next thrift flip is a French floral serving tray. Now, if you remember, I was kind of waffling back and forth between the two images. Well, I didn't want that to go to waste. So I had this frame that I picked up on like the Hobby Lobby like clearance shelf. So it's not technically a thrift, but it was like an outcast at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> so, And it's this just beautiful wood frame that's just been sitting around waiting for the right project. Then I went and hit up my scrap pile to see what I could find. Okay, so I'm gonna just check my scrap pile here to see if there's anything. I think I have something, yeah, like this piece right here that might fit in this frame. Let's just see how this fits. Ooh, that is super close. Okay, so I just need to cut off a little tiny bit, but it's the right thickness and everything, and all we need to do is trim just a touch. Then I cut down the piece of scrap wood. I didn't have to cut off much. It was just a couple quick cuts to make it fit. And then I got to painting the scrap wood in two coats of white chalk paint. And then I attempted to do the image transfer on that one. And well, I actually kind of did them like at the same time. So I didn't really know that it wasn't gonna go well, but like, it's just that whole same process of the image transfer of like the polyacrylic, putting it face down, using the water to kind of, you know, remove the paper and then it looked so bad. I was like, you know what? The picnic basket looked kind of bad. It wasn't like my favorite, but it was like passable. This to me was just a total fail. So at this point I'm like, I am so over the image transfer. I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. So then I flipped the board over and proceeded to start again. And I did two coats of white chalk paint. So can you guess what I'm gonna go back to? 
that original water slide paper. Now, the reason I didn't really do the water slide paper for that last picnic basket and initially for the tray was because the sheets only come in like an eight and a half by 11 and there would have been seams and I just didn't know how it worked. So after the failure of the picnic basket and the epic failure of what I'm tempting to be like a little serving tray here with the French floral, I'm like, you know what? I'd rather see a little seam than have these results. So what I did is I split the image down the middle in two and I printed out two sheets of this water slide paper. It's pretty affordable too. A lot more affordable than having these images printed out at Staples, I can tell you that much for sure. So then I repeated that same process of using the triple thick crystal clear glaze, three coats. I, I think I even did four coats on this because it was gonna be a serving tray and I just wanted to be extra sure. With that dry, I made sure the cuts were super straight with my Cricut like little paper cutter. We just repeated that same water slide method of submerging the paper into the water, waiting about 30 seconds. Because it was a little bit bigger, it might be up to a minute. And this is where kind of like the rubber meets the road. If you did it properly, it won't disintegrate. If you don't do that crystal clear coats, then like the paper kind of disintegrates into the water and it's just a total mess. So make sure you do that step. But we didn't have that problem this time around. We submerged our paper, laid it out where we wanted and like carefully removed the under backing. And then we did the second piece, making sure to match up the seams as close as possible so that it was almost like non-existent. And then pulled that sheet out. And then I was like, yes, I don't even care that there's a seam. This is looking good so far. And then I smoothed it all out, got rid of the air bubbles and let that dry really well for like an hour or two, just to make sure that like all the water is gone and dissolved. Then I knew that I'm gonna be attempting to use this for a serving tray. So I did like two or three coats of a matte clear finish, um, a non-yellowing, this Watco brand that I really love and I, made sure that it was really sealed well. And also it was kind of dual purpose because I was trying to hide as much of that seam as possible. But overall, I was like doing a happy dance at this point going, woohoo, this is looking good. <laughs> and so then all we needed to do was put it into that frame that we got from Hobby Lobby and, and around the edges, I just took my finish nailer and nailed that down into place because we did not want it going anywhere. You don't want to be holding a serving tray and have the bottom drop out. So it needed to be secure. Now you could stop at this point and just turn it into a beautiful piece of art. As you see here, I, I think this could be a really good technique for art. Or you could continue on like I did and I used some of these really cool like iron handles that I love to get from Hobby Lobby in a black and I just screwed those in on either side and then we have this beautiful serving tray and, and I have to tell you this might be my favorite thrift flip of this episode it's so cute and summery and fresh you could use it indoors you could use it outdoors I just love it I think it's beautiful now I might have a lot of you asking well why don't you just mod podge it on well I have not had great uh, success mod podging things I think ultimately over time it bubbles up you know I just I am just a huge fan of this water slide paper because it gets it suctions right down and and really has such a beautiful finished look I love it so I I'll link that water slide paper in the description box below because it is such a cool product, don't you think? I And I love it better than Mod Podge. Clearly, I love it better than image transferring, which I don't know that I want to do again. <laughs> I wanted to give you a quick update on the strawberries. Um, a lot of you told me to take out the center pot, so I immediately did that. And then I, they, you told me to give it lots of sunshine, lots of water, and it's looking really good. I even have a couple of my first strawberries starting to grow. I am so excited. Yay for me. <laughs> Our next thrift flip, you could really do this two different ways. I found this really pretty kind of like 
ice bucket that was glass at the thrift store, I thought, wow, this is really, really pretty. And wouldn't that be such a fun thing to have in the summer? And then I found this really cute, like silver candlestick, if you will. It's kind of like shorter. And I envisioned combining the two together. I did this kind of as an optional thing. I decided to kind of etch the front of the glass with something that's kind of summery. And so I found this image on Cricut Design Studio. And like this, this part is totally optional by the way, because I think you could still get a really good look without this, but I just thought this was fun. I found a bee, uh, an image that was like half bee and then half flowers, and I thought, well, that is very summery. And I went ahead and designed it and, and put it in like a round circle. I weeded out all the excess, put on our transfer tape, and then very carefully put on our stencil, which is a little challenging kind of on a round item like we were working with, but ultimately we got it pretty good. And then we applied our etching cream. I put it on super generously and I let it sit for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, you kind of scrape off all of the excess, put it back in the jar because you can totally reuse it. So you want to get as much of it off as possible and put it back in the jar for another project. And then I took like a paper towel and tried to wipe off as much of the remaining Armor Edge cream off before we took it to the sink where we washed it off with soap and water and make sure you wear rubber, rubber gloves anytime you're gonna make contact with this Armor Edge cr cream because it's pretty abrasive and, and it can sting and hurt. And then we had this really pretty kind of fun image on our little ice bucket. And then what I did is I took this epoxy kit that I get at the Dollar Tree and you it's a two-part epoxy. You kind of open it up and like squeeze the contents of the tubes out, mix it all together like with a wooden uh, stick. And then I like very generously put this on our little candlestick, just kind of wipe it off. And then we, I put it on the center of the bottom and you want to let this sit. It, it's quick setting, so like it, it won't move in like a few minutes, but before you start handling it, I always recommend about waiting 12 hours, which is what I did. That's it. So you could do this just like the base and the ice bucket and it would be super cute and just forgo the stencil part. And then you just fill it up with ice and a beverage of your choice. We don't drink alcohol at our house, so you see sparkling cider here, but whatever works for you. I just think this is a really cute piece that you could use in your summer entertaining and I love how it turned out and what do you think? Wonder. On our thrifting adventure I found this lamp and as is I liked it. I thought it kind of reminded me of like a chess piece and we've got this outdoor chess table now and I envisioned this lamp coming in my outdoor living space and you know, kind of making it feel like more of like an outdoor real room. So what I did is I ordered a solar powered light bulb and I thought it would be really cool if we didn't even need to plug it in, but just had kind of some ambient lighting. So this is super easy. I did nothing to the lamp. <laughs> I thought it was cute as is, and I didn't do anything to the lamp. All I did was hit purchase off of Amazon, the solar powered light bulb, and charged up the light. And all you do is hang it from the lampshade. Now I was kind of hoping, because it does have like the ability to like screw in, I was kind of hoping I could screw it in, but the how you turn it on is in its little hanging thing, so it, that didn't work out. From when it's all turned on, you can't tell that it's like hanging from the lampshade, and it was easy because all you had to do is hang a little light bulb from it and that's it. That's the easiest thrift flip you'll probably ever see because <laughs> all it is is hanging a light bulb and turning it on and everybody can do that, right? So I think this adds a lot of personality, a little coziness. Um, what I might do is get some kind of sticky adhesive so when like the winds pick up it doesn't like get knocked over easily and I've heard about like this new wax museum paste or something and I'm ordering that because I we do get some wind occasionally and I think that that would be a good thing to have what do you think all right so I had a blast sharing all of my fun thrift flips with you even like the good and the bad you know not everything works out great also I had so much fun sharing 
a few of my outfits that, from ThreadUp, and if you haven't tried ThreadUp before, make sure you go check them out. Use that coupon code with the 30% off and the free shipping. I put that in the description box below, so definitely highly, highly recommend. And if you want kind of like a sneak peek into my little fun vacation to the Dominican Republic, make sure you follow me over on Instagram because I'm gonna be posting some stories from my vacation next week. So if you want a little sneak peek, that's where it will be. And if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.